Zidiot with a Library Card, a podcast by Bennett. So today I'm going to finish up a series on the Satanic Verses by Salman Rushdie. Uh, show one, which you should listen to the first two. Um, maybe show one's okay. It's it's a lot about the the impressions I got in the beginning of the book. Maybe to encourage people just to pick it up and read it before I give a full analyst analyst. Before I analyze the book and you get my opinions on it, it was sort of what I liked about the beginning of the book and and maybe whet your appetite to read it. The second one was about the controversy that this book caused, which I I find very interesting. And, And not so much the controversy. Reading the book, I can understand why Islamic folks didn't like the book and and were upset by it. It's it's more their overly violent reaction to it. And that's not all Islamic folks folks, but a lot of them did react very violently and that's bizarre to me growing up in a liberal western democracy to do any sort of violence or or burn books cuz you don't like them. Today I'm going to give an overall view of the book. Um, I can't summarize it. Um, I could. Su- I mean, I can summarize it. I I read it, but um, the summary would be uh, for me because I, I can go on on long little tangents. The summary for me would be about an hour long show, and it would sound all over the place because this book is all over the place. There's stories within stories and there are a lot of characters and they're they're integral to their parts of the story so I would say it's a tough book to summarize it's probably just a book you need to read and that's the thing as much as it's hard to summarize and there are a lot of characters it's actually not a a very tough book to understand Uh, all the stories are very straightforward and understandable it reads sometimes like a a collection of short stories with an overarching story on the outside. Reminds me a lot, actually, of a book I was listening to on tape, which is part of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy sort of has this, too. It goes off on little tangents. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is is a comedy and is funny, and they are gags that then just sort of get tied together by by a string of a story and it works uh, but it's a hard book to summarize and not sound crazy or boring the short stories and the little gags are what you really like about this book and to me it's the same with this book with the satanic verses it feels like a collection of short stories that are tied together in an overarching story some stories go through the whole book the, the main story being the antagonist and protagonist's survival of a plane crash and the fallout from that. So that is that's the the main story, but there are a bunch of little stories tied in, and even their stories, their overarching plots have what seem like what seem like tangents that go off that don't really pay off in the end. You could write some of this book without uh, some of the the side roads it goes down, but the side roads are really interesting, and they they fill out the book with just amazing imagery and interesting story and interesting dialogue. Although the book doesn't feel as cohesive as some, it's it's a very well written book, and that's that's the thing. Salman Rushdie is a great author. Um, he's a great writer. He he can do very serious writing um, that, that really pulls at your heartstrings. Um, he can do thoughtful, philosophical writing that, that makes you think. And, and he does does writing that makes you laugh, too. He really is a master of his craft. Um, and I couldn't put him down. I, I tend to give fiction writers more leeway anyway. I'm, I'm just amazed at the creativity and the the resources that they use. So I, I've noticed that on these shows, I, I, I haven't, I don't think I've trashed a novel. I don't think I've said a work of fiction is bad, but I have for a few works of nonfiction. I guess I have an easier time poking holes in the philosophy of these works of fiction or these works of nonfiction where works of fiction don't necessarily have a philosophy. And I don't get so mad even if I disagree with the philosophy because 
I I always enjoy the presentation of a good novel. And I've read mostly good novels because reading a bad novel is painful. It it's homework and it's just awful. My one problem with the book and I don't know if it's just that the book is so all encompassing or there's so many different things going on. My one problem is that I I didn't feel like there were overarching themes in the book. Each story each of the short little stories has themes in it. Uh, I would say the three main themes I've sort of picked up was uh, themes on racism, uh, especially in England in the 80s. Uh, I, I believe Salman Rushdie felt and, and many others felt that it had become an unwelcoming time in Britain for immigrants of non-European descent. Uh, I'm not too aware. I tried to do a little reading on it, and I didn't find too much that that pointed to either direction. So it is. It's a bit hard to say. There's themes of redemption. Uh, that probably is the overarching theme, and this is another part of the book. There's no clear antagonist or protagonist. I mean, I have an idea of who the protagonist is and who the antagonist is, but it it switched in the book. And some books do that, and it does make for an interesting story. But the one is r- redeemed through his father and his relationship with his father, and that th- that works. And that's a theme in the book. You f- you find little redemptive stories, and then large redemptive stories, and that's that's that tends to be what a theme looks like to me. Is that you can you can take the overarching story and apply that theme but then you can take sections of the book that are you know side character stories uh b b stories if we're using the a b story model that things like sitcoms use the b stories have little redemptions in it and this one this is this is the hard thing about the book it was really hard to pin down a theme the third theme was indian identity and again you can you can see it in the overarching character but it it shifts and it's hard to it's hard to get your fingers on other instances it's hard to get your hands on other instances where indian identity is explored very much and they they walk away from that theme for a little bit i imagine it would be a hard book to write about like if you had to write a paper about it it's one of those books you'd have to take a section or a character, and do a study of that person. Because if you had to write an overarching, like a, a book report on this book, and you could tell by this show I'm having trouble doing that, because I, I guess this is sort of a book report. If you had to do a book report on this book, it's really tough to like pin down a few themes to write about. It would have to be a long book report, because you'd have to explore all these different avenues. And that's the thing. There are a lot of stories in this book. There, are, it's this book is not one story. This book is multiple stories, and the the stories come and go and and reappear, and things you thought were resolved come back. So it is a very fluid story, and it it really it will jar you sometimes and be like, oh, that's right, we're we're back here. Especially one of the characters has dreams in which he sees biblical. Well, chronicle stories in the Quran stories. He dreams them, and he dreams some other what I would call fairy tales. Two main ones: one about a king, and one about a, a girl whose clothes are butterflies, and she's a she's sort of prophet, a prophetess. And those are those are some of the stories that that get you sidetracked. But there are other stories that sidetrack you. The whole how the how the plane that they're in blows up. It's a whole section of the book in which the plane gets taken hostage, and it's important. But I mean, it, it feels also like a a side track. I, you're reminded that the book. You're reminded in the book that the plane does get taken by. I, I think it's like militant Sikhs, which is f- a funny concept to begin with. But they take the the plane that these two characters are on hostage. And when it's mentioned at the end of the book, you're like, oh, that's right. The plane was taken hostage because it's it's an interesting story. It's sort of a, an interesting character study of the, the ho- hostage takers, the terrorists. 
and who their leader is and and gender roles and all that stuff. It's it's interesting when you're reading it, but the bearing on the story is minimal. Like it it has to happen, I guess, for the plane to blow up, but the plane could just blow up. It also establishes a relationship between our two main characters, but even then, you, there are other ways to write that in, and it's just one of those things that it works as a story, as an interesting story, but it, it's not overly important to the whole narrative. So, And that's really what I want to get at with this book. This is a bad book for taking out from the library. I really enjoyed this book. There were times I just wanted to put it down for a while. And pick it up in like a few weeks or a month. And this is a book you can do that with. If you have a decent memory, you'll be able to remember what's going on. Because, again, it's a pretty straightforward plot. There's just all these little side characters that come in and out of the the book. And you're reminded who they are when they reappear. So it is an easy book to read. I, I would say this is a great book if you're the type of person that likes to pick up books, read them for a little bit, and then put them down. Like It's a good like travel book. If you're on a plane, if, if you travel a lot, like my wife travels a lot for work, and I would say that, that it's good for her to read a, a little section and then put the book down and then pick it back up when she's on, maybe not on a plane, because a plane does blow up in the book. So if you're a nervous flyer, maybe not the best book for that. But it's a it's a really good book to own. So I'm going to do Salman Rushdie a, f- a favor with all my internet influence and suggest that you buy this book, have it, read a little bit at a time, and then when you feel like putting it down, put it down for a little bit. Take a nice little break from it. Because it, it is a really good book. It It sort of has that collection of short stories, but you do have to read it chronologically the book is broken up into sections and the sections do carry almost a single narrative so if you wanted to read it that way i just don't think you could jump around because there is fabric that ties the story together so my recommendation for this book is read it it's an important book historically it's an important novel and it's a really interesting novel and so read the book But I would say read it in sections. It's not a book you need to hurry through. It's a book to be enjoyed, like sipped, or or smoked slowly like a a good cigar. It's a book you should take your time with. If you're someone who needs to rip through books, and I kind of can be like that sometimes. I I wanted to put this book away for a while and then come back to it. And maybe I should have, but I also wanted to get this show out and not have to think about the satanic verses for a whole, you know, three, four months to a year where I'm just, you know, picking it up and being like, oh, maybe I should do a show on this section now, which which I could have done, but the whole, I would have had to change the show name to Idiot Who Read Satanic Verses, and I don't know how that would go over well. It would be a flagged podcast. It would seem like it was anti-Muslim. Read Satanic Verses, buy it, because it's a tough library book. You're gonna, you're gonna. I paid overdue. Day, uh, I had to pay some overdue fines because of this book. So, um, yeah, purchase it, have it in your house, and read it in little sections. I'm actually buying it from Amazon tomorrow to reread, but reread in a leisurely fashion. All right, thanks for listening.